Well, hello there, people in the viewer verse. As I, Captain of the Steves, and yes, I've got myself a new merch mug. It's freaking wonderful. I think it is. Anyway, look, it's got it's got that guy on one side. It's got a ship on the other. Freaking awesome. Cup of tea with Captain Steve. And I've got a new background. It's got an octopus there rather than my usual jellyfish. Now, people, I have to be quite brutally honest with you. This is like my fourth attempt at trying to do this video. Now, the Corvax Law is not crafted in a way that's it's it's very easy to read it's got a lot of caserts in it it's got a lot of breaks it's got a lot of redacted bits in it and it's 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 a pain to read it's a pain to read people so anyway i'm going to try again but if this fails i just can't be asked if it fails anyway let's jump on over into game so i've already hit up this terminal before and i don't know whether it's going to let me read the same law let's have a look and see if it does let's just go and get into the encryption there we go Infiltration of a Viking proposed in multiple convergence era, eras. Species resistance to attempts, but failure is a teacher. Each Vi synth elected screaming violent reactions within moments of contact. Code of honor, highly specific, contradictory, born from old trauma, casualties established. Evidence of multiple prognata species Vi variant last survivors of family doomed to self destruction. The Viking fear replacement, just as they replace their siblings, they are unconscious of the fear's origin. Herc and Nal is the old pattern, brother against brother. Patterns can be understood, patterns are logical, failure is a teacher. I imagine there's some sort of moral story there somewhere hidden amongst all of that allegory and, um, you know, symbol, symbolic type shizzle. Anyway, let's head on over to this little champion. Let's have a little word with him. So what lore have you got for me? Okay, cool. Theories on the origins of Corvax. The archive requires the user to place their body against its sensor. It whispers of what the Corvax might once have been. You. Growth and life are the words. Stars and worlds are machines. The Atlas teaches this. The Sentinels deliver the equation. Okay. The Atlas interface has uplifted the early civilizations of this universe. We become more than we were. Hypothesis 1. The core of Axe were once organic. We gradually, rapidly altered our beings. We uploaded, improved our own minds. This was our choice. It was forced upon us. Hypothesis 2. The Corvax have always been machines. We evolved from the noise of stars. We were created through the Atlas imperative. We were once sentinels. We learned from sentinels. Okay. Hypothesis 3. There is no cause, no effect, no time to impose to its misunderstand the sadness of the Atlas. We are the dreams of metal. Okay, right, well, we've come across a lot of this dream type stuff. I know of metals and things like that. In fact, we've just put together some sort of like a lantian bean of ourselves. I mean, you can see here I've got some robotic legs and robotic midriff going on. So, yeah, it does seem to be that the whole dreams of metal and being birthed into machines from consciousness is a thing. Now, there is also mention in the Gek law that the Gek took Corvax and made them flesh inside of an appearance modifier. Now, we do encounter what's called a synthetti Gek inside of the Traveler's law, which is a Gek that was synthetic. So it could be that the Gek forced the Corvax into appearance modifiers and made them look like Gek. But maybe the Corvax have always looked like this, you know? So it's, it's a little bit hard to, to discern exactly what's going on there or whether the Corvax have had another form other than what we see before us now. I mean, they do say that they may have even been sentinels at one point. I don't know whether that's ever been the case. But then again, these machine type creatures that we're making now look very sentinelized. In fact, they look just like the sentinel pilots and the Corvax aren't too far removed, to be honest. Anyways, let's move on with the law, shall we, people? Because that one, that one has got so many loose ends and vagueness that it's, it's very hard to discern what reality actually is and which hypothesis out of those three bears as much truth. In fact, all three of them have elements of truth to me there. So I would say it's a mixture of all freaking three of them. Who bloody knows, mate? Anyway, fragments of the ancient entities. The archive holds shards of forts recovered from fallen convergence. These are the last remaining mines of the electronic life forms destroyed and melted down in their millions. Journey, brain, Xert. Formed in void, spontaneous complete Xert 
Atlas Protocol made flesh, the Atlantid called, called, called Void Mother by lesser voices brought pilgrims cause its mass. Lived for millennia, cause died, whispered of the 19th minute. You see what I mean? This is like a freaking tongue twister reading all of this out, people. Luckily, the words are on the screen, so hopefully if I do fluff up, at least you can make sense of it yourself. Now that, that is a freaking riddle and a half to get through, isn't it? But it seems to be that Atlantid was called the Void Mother, and the Void Mother came about on the destruction of Korvax Prime. It does make you think that perhaps when Korvax Prime got birthed into reality, creating the Void Mother, Void Mother did something with inside of the 19th minute that perhaps birthed in the Korvax, but that wouldn't make sense because the Korvax would have already been on Korvax Prime. So it's a bit of bang. Messes with your head. Messes with your freaking head. Anyhow, yeah, because it says there, the Atlas Protocol made flesh. Well, what did they make flesh exactly? The brain was formed in the void. So maybe they've got some sort of organic brain, but a lot of them is metallic and outer shell-like. Who knows? Are they cyborgs? I don't know. Rebirthed. Left secrets beyond computation. Beyond because mind arcs. Carpus and convergence. Okay. Corvax honored fallen. Tried to bring back Atlantid birthed failed eggs okay on the shoulders of a sleeping god from flesh built a metal weld right okay so they tried to reborn their fallen but instead came about with void eggs well, at least that's what i'm thinking when it says failed eggs i'm thinking void eggs they came from the void is what i'm thinking okay home the void mother lived Psst. the prime Okay, that last sentence is very interesting. The Void Mother lived. Now, Corvax Prime was their home world. Got destroyed. Got destroyed by the Gek, blown to smithereens. And then we've been seeing mentions now of Void Prime. So I'm wondering when Corvax Prime got obliterated, whether we're in a, another dimension, the Void or the Realm of Glass, Corvax Prime became Void Prime. That's what I'm thinking, people. And I'm wondering if we do get to go in the Void, whether it's just one planet. Maybe Corvax prime as void prime but we shall see anyways let's move on well there's a little guy inside this kiosk hello there matey homage hello there homage how are you okay the experiment this archive has been severed from all others of its kind the entities that built it appear to be running secret experiments lovely I am here, I am here, I am here. These words continue for hours. An electronic being sometimes launching into a sequence of tonal cries, weeping expressed in numbers. I uh, one, kst, 19, kst, back. I would like to come back. A sequence of lights flash, registering the request. The entity is reconnected to its group mind. I am, we are, I, I. The entity is disconnected and reconnected again and again. With increasing rapidity. They grow silent. Eventually, even when reconnected, they refuse to speak. Well, who wouldn't, you know? Waste of time. They'll just cut you back off again. An individual has been reconnected. The experiment is deemed a success. Sounds like freaking torture to me, but if you want to deem that as a success, well done you, Corvax crazy people. Righto. Um, right, so I'm going to have a little sip of my tea, people. I'm just going to wet my whistle. I'm just going to stop the video for a second, take a breather. One sec. Okay, right, well, we're heading back over to these guys. Finish my freaking teammate. Heck yes, empty mugs. Freaking lovely. Okay, right, anyway, we're going to head on over to these radiant chaps. Hello there, red and blue. Yeah, it's like freaking Pokemon. <laughs> Anyhow, here we go. Remembrance. The entry appears to record a history of electronic intelligences across known space. Primera. Corvax convergence born on ley lines of Corvax Prime. Gift of first monolith. Murdered. What was murdered? What gift? What the? I... Okay. Second era. Second convergence era formed in dark times. The sound of the top one sounds pretty dark as well. Yeah. Collective hiding on Beleron. Established new networks. Subverted and enslaved. Ah. Okay. Cool. I think I know where this is going. Redacted. Third. Kazert. The archive refuses access to the next entries in this log. Okay. We're well, going back to the second era log then. Um, Beleron was the Gek homeworld, and yeah, the Corvax got enslaved there. And to get rid of their enslavement and the way they were being treated by the Gek, they sacrificed themselves. All their blood, which was nanites, went into the spawning pools of the Gek and made the Geks more docile. There we are. A little bit of 
I think I've already explained that in other videos, but if you haven't seen them, you know, boom, done. Right, anyways, let's just scroll on down. Uh, oh, there's a bit more. Final entries, Seventh's Convergence. Must not fall, must not forget, Atlas Imperative, discover, harvest, no, callbacks will do the same. Physical markers must remain until the end, must endure for traveller's return, must be known, even in reality fall, they will see who we were, what we could have been, our shadows of greater being. Traveller has come back, will forgive, will read, will know. Okay, now I'm reading this little callbacks chums, I am. And um, a lot of this at the moment makes some sense, but I don't think it's going to make full sense until we've gone through all four chapters of this arc because it seems to be so closely linked to Corvax Prime and to your origin story. So at the moment, this is quite vague and still feels like a loose end. But I am going to be doing another video soon, people, on theories based on lore currently in game. And that is something that I feel I must touch on, to be honest. So yeah, because it does feel like the Corvax could be greater than what we see here now and may have been greater than what we see here now in the past. But anyway, we're going to be moving on. <clears throat> Hopefully, and we've got a little poem to be read to us. Have I already talked to you two? I don't think I have. No? Okay, right, we're heading over to this guy then. Entity Essie. Brilliant. Poems of praise. There are old callbacks prayers, recovered from dim recollections of a long since obliterated convergence. The callbacks of that time appear to worship sentinels, reciting short poems of praise and observations to their silent gods. Voyage across mass, Aeron's glide with unspoiled time, communion waits, Walker concessions, Arion's slumber in green fields, contemplating day, craft tallies fallen toil, pirates thieves of monolith, Corvax would tend stream. Okay, interesting stuff there. Something to note, people, is the Sentinels are also known as the Aerons. So if you're wondering what Aerons are, that just means Sentinels. But yeah, quite a nice little poem. It's interesting that pirates are thieving at monoliths. You know, we get that inside the monolith sort of like little mini puzzles anyway. So I don't think we've learned anything overly new there anyway. Anyhow, we're going to be going over to this chappy. Hello there, chappy. All select, lovely, and this is imitation. The archive has been changed, distorted from its original purpose, as a place of peace. The entries here hum with a distant corruption. Prior Empire had the logic, remove Corvax identity through alteration of metallic appearance to anonymous flesh. Flesh generated by appearance modification device, machine just like Corvax. XN Echo. First to override system, initiated change to first spawn's appearance, mimic their ways, slew devoured fellow Corbacks in their ways of Halkan. Even now we learn new logic, even a cruel world could be understood, even hate can be manipulated, we will not lose ourselves again. Okay, so this kind of plays into what I was saying before about the Synfeti Gek. Perhaps the Gek, as a punishment to the Corvax, put them in appearance modifiers and made them look more Gek-like. That's kind of what I'm discerning from this. But it, it might it might have different meaning altogether. It might mean that the Gek turned the Corvax into looking to how we see them now, and perhaps they look something somewhat different before. It's still a little bit vague. I can't piece all this together to understand exactly what's being told to me here, people. But if you've got a better idea, stick it inside the actual comments. Anyways, let's head on over to this little kiosk over here. Now this is where inside of the actual wiki, because I'm reading the wiki on the laptop down there. That's why I'm looking down there all the time, people. Yeah, because that's where my laptop is with all this on. Anyway, let's uh, scroll on down. So we've got Vicenth, which we've already done. That was the first bit of lore that I read in the archive. The Observer. Here we go. The archive contains recordings by an entity known as the Observer. They appear to have been invited by the Corvax to attend the birth of their offspring. Sweet. 
The young of this species appears to be indistinguishable from other individuals, but refer to themselves as a new Corvax entity. Yeah, so again, this is why we don't see any youngsters, we don't see any baby Corvax, because they're birthed into a new shell which looks like an adult, even though they're a young Corvax. And I think this is the words of the observer that we're reading now, not that of an actual Corvax. I was invited to watch, to report, to provide my observations on the process. Even the firstborn did not understand how to forge new Corvax in this manner. The carapace and the nanite clusters undulate in the heart of the monolith. Three figures dance above a red orb. I break my contract, I look away. Hmm, okay, well the only time I've seen three figures dancing above a red orb was inside of the atlas, not at a monolith, but that's kind of interesting. And it almost feels that perhaps the birthing of a new Corvax is done at monoliths. Now, during the Singularity expedition, we come across a corrupted Corvax monolith that had a separate stone in it, and it was purple in colour. Oh, <laughs> this, is, this is cool. Okay, cool. The Observer continues to write about their observations, noticing the emotional changes in the new Corvax as they grow. They experience loneliness, isolation, fear for a long time. They are frequently tested by examiners in their ability to convert reams of tech data into accurate holograms. Cool. If the information is missing, they do not understand what they are doing. They can be disconnected. The examiners do not enjoy or like the involvement of strangers. I fear I do not. I, I. Looks like they're being disconnected themselves there. This is the last entry. There are thousands of these logs repeating themselves again and again. When the new Corvax entities reach a certain age, they appear to terminate their observer, erasing all entities' memory for a new crop. It's an age-old custom, a dedication to the Atlas itself, an echo of what once befell the universe itself, through few understandings of the primordial secret. What the actual fudge? So what is the observer? A, a, a hat. Have we ever come across the Observer? I have no idea who the Observer is. It's obviously not the Gek, because the Firstborn didn't know how to do it. So what was the Observer? It sounds like it can be disconnected as well. And this, it must be some sort of other Corvax form that we haven't come across. It's the only thing I can discern from that. Okay, right. Anyhow, have I run out of freaking Corvax? No, I don't think I have. There's two more over on this gantry over here playing patty cake. Let's go see these guys. Hello, chappies playing patty cake. They look like twins. I guess. Yins and uh, Obleski, or whatever your name is. Cool. Disconnection. Disconnected choose to be what they are. They choose the errors that led to their ejection. They choose in other cases to leave their own free will. 98% attempt to rejoin the convergence once they are alone. They do not understand what we are. Even those that have lived their entire lives in our light we are not a hive mind. We are not individuals. We are in between. We are an ocean of many creatures, one mass containing multitudes of ecosystems, of living and dead, of thoughts and feelings, constantly merging and unmerging. Sounds like freaking chaos, if you ask me. The weeping of the disconnection, the disconnected, is just a vapor, liquid drifting into uncharted skies. Oh my days. That sounds horrific, but at the same time, you know, don't knock it unless you try it, eh? Right, okay, well, I'm one Corvax short of, of a full brick. Oh no, he's about to take off! Frick you then! Okay, um, dang it. That's the only ship that appears to be here. Alright, fine. Uh, oh, there's one right over there. Hello, mate. Oh, there's two. There's two of them. What are you guys doing? Hiding behind these boxes. Alright, anyway, this is the last bit of lore, people, for the Corvax. A history. The archive contains a multitude of Corvax holograms, planets dance in their orbits, thousand cities rise and fall like the bloom of wildlife. The unclear fire of sentinels reaps the harvest. That sounds freaking sinister as well. Shell upon shell collapses across the universe, the flow of a river of souls filling each dormant vessel red orbs ever blinking in their wake. A trillion Corvax bow before a spherical mass, living biological ships orbiting a sentinel, sentient world. It goes to sleep, encased in metal, as long as the centuries pass. It's all wiped out in a war of light and greed. Holy fudge! 
That sounds like the destruction of Corvax Prime. And it's that, that's that there. A trillion Corvax bow before a spherical mass. Living biological ships, living ships, orbiting the sentient world. A whole world that's sentient. You're having a freaking laugh, mate. Is that now not Corvax Prime, but maybe that's Void Prime? Or was it Corvax Prime? It goes to sleep encased in metal as long as the centuries pass. Holy fudge. Well, if anything, it makes me want to see Corvax freaking Prime or, or the new Void Prime, as we're hearing inside of this sort of stuff. I know we can't visit Corvax Prime. It got ballooned into smithereens, mate. So, yeah, there's that. But anyway, that concludes all of the archive lore. Now, there's quite a lot of this that does appear to be a little bit loose-ended and a little bit vague. Now, me, Beeble, Kurt, and others, I mean, anyone can come and join us, have been, well, we're going to be doing something called Into the Void. We're hopefully going to be doing this on a Friday night after we run the, um, the weekend mission run. Here you go, I'll show you my screen setup. There it is, boom, looks like that, pretty much. Yeah, so yeah, it's going to have a little octopus in the background and stuff. It's going to be pretty darn snazzy and awesome. Uh, so let's just make me a little bit a little larger on the screen. Not too sure why I'm dropping a couple of frames there. A little bit odd. I wonder if I bring back in my jellyfish one and get rid of the other one, whether that helps. Mm, yeah, maybe. Anyhow, people, so that's coming on Fridays. And what it's about is looking at the ARG, looking at the lore, doing a bit of speculation on what might happen perhaps in the next couple of arcs that get put out by Hello Games and looking at the game files. So as you know, me, my head's in the clouds all the time. I'm always thinking about crazy tinfoil, tinfoil hat type ideas. Beeble roots his sort of speculation in logic and patterns and things like that. So hopefully bouncing ideas off of Beeble, somewhere in between, we're going to find some sort of middle ground that might be feasible. And then with Kurt being able to jump into the game files and ratify and confirm things or put a bit of clarity out there, or to say, have you seen this and lead us down another trail with breadcrumbs, I think could work really well. So we're going to be delivering that on a Friday after the weekend mission run in, so around 8 p.m. in UK time. So yeah, hopefully it's going to happen this Friday if we get it all put together in time. Until then, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again. <laughs>